So how they responded to this was to walk back through the kitchen past two fire extinguishers and out the back exit. Hey guys and welcome back to my channel. Welcome to part two of the Philpop fire case. What are you doing? Sandy left to go watch my dad make lunch and I had to coax her back in with a uh, bag of popcorn. Oh! <laughs> Good girl, she does love her popcorn. Oh, that's nice sound effects. So if you haven't seen part one, there are a lot of things that won't make sense in this video. So go watch that. It's just a video that I put up 24 hours before this one. And if you're coming here from part one, I left you on a bit of a cliffhanger. I know it was cruel, but it had to be done. <laughs> so where we left off was the Philpot house was on fire and one of the Butler brothers was in the house trying to save the children. So like I said, the successes stopped pretty soon after he got into the house because the smoke in the house was so thick and black that he couldn't get into any of the kids' rooms. Like you couldn't even see your hand in front of your face kind of thing. And he described the level of smoke as putting your mouth over an exhaust pipe and breathing in. So Mick Philpot, the father of five of the children, tried to get into the house as well. He put a ladder up against the window or something. And look, I don't know if he failed as well or if there was some other reason he couldn't get into the house. But other than this, Darren and Jamie remember Mick and Marae just standing in the garden, watching their house burn, knowing that six of their children were inside it. So Darren and Jamie were literally putting their own lives at risk to save someone else's children. And Mick and Marae were essentially just standing there watching. I just don't understand how you could be anything less than absolutely frantic in that situation. So the emergency services arrived only four minutes after the call was put through and their first demand was that Darren and Jamie stop trying to save the children because it was just too dangerous. And of course you wanna save them, but then again, it could very easily be the end of your own life as well. So, oh, I can't even imagine that kind of internal conflict. But realistically at this point, going into the house would have been a death sentence because it had reached over 500 degrees Celsius. So then we started getting some movement and finally the firemen did get into the house. The first bedroom that they came across was Jade's bedroom. And Jade was Mick and Marae's only daughter and she's also 10 years old. They brought her outside and she was not conscious but they tried to revive her. And as this was happening, the other five children were taken out of the house one by one. And finally, the last child was removed from the house and this was Dwayne who was Marae's son from a previous relationship. So he was the rest of the children's half brother. All six of the children were rushed straight to hospital but despite the doctors desperate, desperate attempts. It was too late for Jade, who was 10, John, who was nine, Jack, who was seven, Jesse, who was six, and Jaden, who was five. They had lost five children. Unfortunately, these children passed away due to excessive smoke inhalation. So Dwayne was the last child that had been in the fire that was still alive at this point, but he was in critical condition. He was put on life support and he was actually moved to a different hospital that could better accommodate his needs. But unfortunately, two days after the fire, Dwayne passed away as well. And oftentimes when there's a tragedy like this within a community, that community does come together and just try to help in any way, shape or form. And that is exactly what happened. The local residents of the area set up a charity to help the Philpots. They donated food, they donated money. They raised over 11,000 pounds for the children's funeral. And this funeral took place on the 22nd of June, 2012 at St. Mary's Church in Derby. But uh, what caused this fire? Fires don't just happen out of nowhere, so was this because of cooking? Was was someone smoking? Was, But then again, like it happened at 4am. So anyway, let's get into it. It became very clear that the fire was started at the bottom of the stairs, just inside the front door of the house. And once the downstairs carpet and the polystyrene ceiling tiles caught fire, that's when things got really bad because the smoke actually turned poisonous. And obviously because it started at the bottom of the stairs, it rose up, it went 
into all the children's bedrooms and this was no longer just regular smoke, this was toxic smoke. As a result of this, it would cut off the children's escape routes if they had been conscious, but it would also kill them in minutes. So after not too long, the police brought in a sniffer dog and tried to determine the cause of the fire. And the dog ended up sniffing out some petrol in the letterbox of the house. So this fire was started by someone pouring petrol into the letterbox of the house and throwing in a lit match. And obviously beforehand, the fire had seemed like this massive tragic accident, but now they had to open a murder investigation because this fire was intentionally started and killed six children in the process. So the first place to look was anybody who had a grudge against the Philpot family or anyone they didn't get on with or, you know, anyone they had a negative relationship with. And I mean, <clears throat> because Mick was the type of person he was, I'm sure they had a bit of a list on their hands. But the first person that was arrested was Lisa Willis, his now ex-mistress, who, by the way, Mick did not have a good relationship with at the time. It was not civil whatsoever because they had their custody battle that was going on. And ironically, the morning after the fire, they had a hearing regarding the custody of those four children, which was a little sketchy. Lisa's brother-in-law, Ian, was also arrested on suspicion of murder. And I'm not exactly sure why, I haven't seen any reason as to why, but shortly after this, Lisa and her brother-in-law, Ian, were released without charge. And uh, hmm, it didn't really take long before eyebrows started being raised over Mick himself. It seemed that for someone who had just lost six children, mm, he just was not acting the way you would expect a person to be acting. Not only was he just not distraught, but he also seemed to be kind of almost enjoying the media attention. Also, in the few days where Dwayne was fighting for his life, Mick didn't really bother to visit him. And it literally took other people saying, what are you doing? Go visit your son. Well, he wasn't his son's son, but like, you know, for lack of a better word, go visit your son. It literally took people forcing him to do it for him to go and be with his son who was dying. But him himself, like he wasn't personally that bothered. Now, I know, I know, everyone has their coping mechanisms and we always make these excuses for people and that's fair sometimes, but really, Mick, really. On Mick Philpot, that is sketchier than it would be on anybody else, so that's all I'm saying. Also, because their house had burned down, like, Mick had no clothes. So, one of the local supermarkets who stocked some clothes came forward to him and said, look, we're happy to give you any clothes you want. You obviously don't have to pay for them. Like, we'll just give them to you. But you're going through too much to have to worry about it, you know? And, uh, <laughs> Mick, I can't, I can't. <laughs> Mick declined their offer because he didn't like the type of clothes that they stocked. I'm sorry for laughing, but I, are you fucking serious? Like, that's what you're concerned about right now? What you're wearing? Like, you, you lost everything in the fire. You lost six children. I have more in this list, by the way, I'm not even done. Mick had also been bragging about all the money he'd made since the fire because of people's charity. I, I honestly have no words. What the f So on the 16th of May, 2012, Mick and Maraid held a press conference. And the whole idea of this, at least from the police's perspective, was to appeal for information on who had intentionally set their house on fire and in turn killed six of their kids. But uh, oh, it would be cruel of me not to include clips from this because this is the weirdest thing. First of all, I want to thank my three oldest children because they helped us to cope with what's going off. And of course, the poor firemen, the police, the ambulances, the doctors, the nurses, Literally everybody who's, who tried, tried to help save our children, they couldn't. <laughs> Let's excuse me a minute. Does anyone feel like Maraid is fake crying? Just me? 
and we can't express our gratitude to everybody that's been concerned with the case, with what's been going on. Um, I've actually been down to my our, our home and what we saw, we just, we just cannot believe it. We grew up in a community that's been had a lot of problems with violence and, and God knows what else. And to see this community to, to come together like they have, it's just, it's just too overwhelming. We've had people from America, France, what we feel. Then poor gentlemen from the fire brigade who saw what, what we've seen, you know, my heart goes out to them because it's not just us, it's suffering, it's them as well. It's everybody. It's... But there's one thing I would request is please, please leave my family alone. If you've got any questions or anything at all, please don't come through me or my family. Please go to the police because what's happening at the moment, you are disrupting what these officers are trying to do. So please, I beg you, leave us alone and let us try and grieve in peace and quiet. That's all I ask. Thank you. Personally, I kind of feel like Mick is just doing this amateur acting job. I feel a bit cruel saying that because what if it was actually real and all that blah 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 but uh, it just seems so insincere. Keeping in mind the fact that he wasn't bothered to go visit Dwayne in hospital when he was fighting for his life. He was worried about the type of clothes he was wearing. He didn't really do anything to stop the fire when he could have and he was bragging about money after he had lost six children. I find it hard to believe that he would actually be this emotional. I don't know if anyone else picked up on this, but both of their tissues are dry and they have not shed a single tear in that clip. They also kept their heads down a lot, particularly Maraid, and the psychology behind that is interesting to say the least. Basically the psychology behind looking down is either you're shy and timid, or you're distrustful and hiding something. You know, for some reason, I just feel like it's the latter. <laughs> Dunno. I know they're very strange part about this press conference was um, the fact that the whole point of it was so that they could appeal for information on, you know, anyone who might have seen something for these people that intentionally, you know, set their house on fire and killed six of their kids. But they did not mention the people who set the fire once. You'd think that in that situation, particularly if you're really as upset as you're putting yourself across as, that you might have something to say about the fact that there are people roaming free, or one person or whoever, roaming free that killed your children. But they, they didn't have a single word to say about that. They just thanked the firemen and they thanked this person and that person and it really was like th this amateur acting role like I, it's uh, what about help us find who killed our children and this press conference really did change the public's perception of them it was after this that the butler brothers came forward to the police to let them know just how bizarre mick and maraid were acting on the night of the fire that they pretty much did nothing like before the press conference they probably thought maybe they were just in shock or they made some kind of excuses for it but after that they were like wait maybe something is going on here maybe this is adding another piece to the puzzle and one of the policemen actually cut the press conference short because he could see it was just not going how it was supposed to go and he led them out of the room and <laughs> i'm really sorry for laughing he reported that mick left the room after the press conference and like threw himself on the ground in like an emotional outburst, almost throwing a tantrum like a child or something. A few minutes later, he was standing up and he was kind of joking and laughing like any other time. So now that the whole nation was very suspicious of Mick and Maraid, the police actually bugged their hotel room and not that surprisingly, they found some stuff. Mick and Maraid had been talking about sticking to the story. There was also a man called Paul Mosley who was heard on these tapes as well and he also seemed to be involved. And also on this tape, Paul Mosley and Maraid Philpott were heard engaging in sex acts. And then Mick is heard saying to Maraid, I'm proud of you because you didn't want to do it. Okay, 
so a few things here, let's unwrap this. Let's be honest here, how did they get so lucky that when their house went up in flames, there was not a scratch on either of them? How did they get that lucky? They weren't harmed in any way by this massive fire that killed six of their children and destroyed their whole house at 4 a.m. And secondly, um, sex stuff, really? You've just lost six children and you're still doing your weird sex stuff. <laughs> no offense, by the way, to any good people out there that enjoy out of the ordinary sex stuff. That's fine, fine by me, you, like live your best life. But when you're these two, I'm not as okay with it. How could you even be in the mood to have sex days after your children have died? And I mean, I'm looking at Mick here because obviously Mairead didn't want to do it because she, so we've got sexual abuse going on as well. Also, I will say that I did see in an article that Mairead performed this sex act with Paul Mosley because he was helping them out and kind of like as a reward or like as you know they're part of the arrangement <laughs> not that that makes any sexual abuse okay but mm. so on the 29th of may 2012 mick and maraid were arrested on suspicion of murder and only two days later they were charged with murder and you know other than being sketchy as hell there was actually some pretty damning evidence against them forensic investigators discovered that the clothes of mick and maraid and paul mosley by the way had petrol on them. A discarded petrol container and a glove were also found near the house. Paul was also arrested on suspicion of murder too, by the way. But then the charges against Mick and Maraid were reduced to manslaughter because while they did intend to set their house on fire, they didn't intend to kill their children. Instead, they wanted to frame Lisa Willis, the ex-mistress, for arson to win back custody of the children that Mick had had with her so that he could claim child benefits for them. So while they might not be the sadistic murderers you might think they are when you first hear they're responsible, they're definitely not good people. <laughs> like who does that? Like, oops, killed my six kids. Like, okay. Let me get into Mick and Maraid's account of the night of the fire. I know I'm kind of going back and forth here, but there's so much stuff that happens in this case that like, it's almost impossible to create like a proper timeline. So supposedly Mick and Maraid watched TV the night before and fell asleep cuddling. And then they woke up a little before 4 a.m. to the sound of the smoke alarm. So they went to check it out and they came across the fire at the bottom of the stairs. Now, at this point, the fire would have been small enough for them to extinguish it easily enough before it like took over the entire house. So how they responded to this was to walk back through the kitchen past two fire extinguishers and out the back exit. Are you for real? <laughs> if that's true, they didn't even try to extinguish the fire knowing that their six kids were upstairs? Okay, moving on to the trial. On the 12th of February, 2013, the trial commenced. So several witnesses, including Lisa Willis and other ex-lovers of Mix, took to the stand. Each of them explained their experiences with physical abuse, emotional abuse, sexual abuse, all of which they had suffered from Mick. Following this, the Butler brothers also took to the stand and they let everyone know just how unfazed Mick and Maraid were when their house was burning down with their children inside it. While they themselves, the Butler brothers, were literally putting their lives at risk to save their children. Mick and Maraid's ah! Then <laughs> the next part, uh, I just, of course, of course Mick wanted to take to the stand too because he just loves all the attention. Even if it was negative attention, he loved being in the spotlight. While he was up there, he tried to explain away the petrol that was found on his clothes by saying it was from his lawnmower, but it didn't take long for them to prove that the lawnmower had totally different petrol than the petrol that was found on his clothes. So, you know, it's just so mad how he just already seems like such a sketch ball and he just continues to make it worse for himself. So on the 2nd of April, 2013, Mick Maraid and Paul Mosley were each found guilty of the manslaughter of the six children. And sentencing took a little longer than usual because the judge wanted to take the whole situation into account. I mean, Mick had been to prison before for 
attempted murder. Are we just gonna forget that and pretend this is an isolated incident? But on the 4th of April, Mick was sentenced to life imprisonment with a minimum of 15 years. Mairead and Paul were sentenced to 17 years with a minimum of half of that, which is what, eight and a half years, which I'm now realizing would be October of 2021. I'm not exactly sure what Paul Mosley's involvement was. I mean, he was definitely involved and he kind of helped to make it happen, but I don't know exactly what he did. But even just justifying it enough not to stop it happening or tell someone about it or how is it okay to let six children die in such a tragic way as well. Anyway, on the 29th of November, 2013, Mairead appealed her sentence because even though it, it was only a minimum of eight and a half years, she thought it was too long. The grounds of her appeal were basically that she was under the control of Mick and because of this, she couldn't exercise free choice but this appeal was dismissed. I'm not exactly sure how I feel about that because on one side I'm like, how can you ever justify putting a house on fire and knowing that your six kids are in there? Like, no, you should never, ever, ever be okay with that. And on the other hand, I'm like, people can be terrified to speak up against their abuser, to stop them from doing things. So basically what I'm trying to say is Mairead could have literally been terrified for her own life. And we really don't know, so I'm, I'm not exactly sure how right it is to judge, but honestly, I would love to know what you think about that because Mairead is the one person I'm like, I mean, I know in my heart that Mick is just an evil prick. <laughs> But Mairead, I don't know, was she really that evil a person or she, did she just find herself in a really unfortunate position and like was too afraid to speak out against him? And after years and years and years of probably being abused and undermined and manipulated, was it just the fact that she, she didn't realize just how bad it was anymore or she really did think that they'd be able to save their kids? But then again, she didn't really seem that upset when they died, so like, I don't know, I'm, I'm so torn. But to bring it all full circle, in terms of why they started the fire, obviously there's the whole thing with Lisa Willis and they wanted custody of Mick's kids with her, um, you know, cause cha-ching. And also so that they could get a bigger council house because they had been denied that last time. And to be fair, I mean, yeah, it was pretty crowded. There were loads of them in there, but you know. Did you really have to burn it down? <laughs> Allegedly, the plan was to go in and save the children as well, but they underestimated just how quickly and aggressively the flames were gonna take over the whole house. And that's about it, but one more little fun fact just about how disgusting and sleazy Mick was. While he was in custody awaiting trial, he wrote his friend a letter and explained all of the sexual things that he was gonna do to Mairead when they got out. It's honestly so frustrating even hearing that information because it's like it was a game to him and he clearly has no remorse. And that brings me to the end of this case. Now do you understand just why I was so proud to not be related to these people? There is so much to have a strong opinion on in this case and I cannot wait to hear what you guys have to say because oh my god. It's just mental. Like I it's almost like every single sentence I've said was like, what? Anyway, thank you so much for watching. If you did enjoy it, please give me a like and comment down below. Let me know what you think. And don't forget to turn on the notifications. There's a little bell right beside, wait, is it that? It's that side, right beside the subscribe button. Also hit the subscribe button if you haven't already. And this is my first time ever doing a two-parter. So if you enjoyed that kind of layout and like the fact that there were two videos versus one long video, let me know. Or if you'd prefer it the other way, also let me know, but I'm not sure how my phone would handle that because I film and edit on my phone and it kind of freaks out when videos get too long. But w what do you like anyway? We'll, we'll see. I'll try and accommodate. <laughs> my Twitter, Instagram, and most importantly, my TikTok are all katephilpot underscore yt. And that's about it. Again, thank you so, so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.